everything is everything, which means a lot of things. But one thing it could mean is that you could learn as much from staring at these rocks that I'm sitting on than you could by attending a college, university, whatever you want to call it for, for six or 10 years. And I just looked over and I looked at these rocks and I'm gonna share with you what came into my mind. So there's this concept in indigenous cultures and ancient cultures that everything's alive, including the rocks. And indigenous cultures actually refer to if they go into the forest, everything's a person, okay? We, they're not object-oriented where they separate and they delineate in between the plants and the animals and the types of plants. They're all people, okay? So at the, they, there are separations, but there's a common thread that they're all people, they're all consciousnesses. So let's talk about consciousness. The human being, let's say we're at a stage of consciousness. So if there is an underlying thread of consciousness through all of this, then we are at a perspective point, right? This grand consciousness is somehow allowing us to be at a perspective point, just like inside of our organism. Our organism is made up of tons of cells and they each have their own perspective point that we don't necessarily grant ourselves awareness of, but they are definitely aware. They are definitely living. They, they eat, they excrete, they duplicate, they kill each other, all right? They compete, they have jobs to do, they have intentions, just like we do. But we are the consciousness that, are, that is aware of itself at this stage. So if we talk about in stages, not saying that one is greater than the other, other, but let's go down a stage from the human being. So we could say that we are self-aware. We are aware of self. If we go down one stage to awareness, okay? So maybe the cells inside of us don't have self-awareness, okay, but they have awareness. And maybe the trees, which I would argue this, but let's just say some plants are aware and not necessarily self-aware and same thing with the animals they are that one that just bit me is aware that it needed to bite me it might not understand that uh, it is separate with its own needs and i'm another separate individual that's going to take advantage of and use so as the animals progress though through their level of awareness to self-awareness eventually they get to they graduate to a life of a human being where we are self-aware. So we can see that in animals, right? You got the bees, they, they operate like a hive mind. They're aware that they have the jobs to do and they're aware of the hive and they're, it's just all aware. There's not really self, there's not really individualization inside of a hive. You look at a gorilla, they're more self-aware, right? They actually understand their role. They understand their territory. They understand that this harem of females is mine because I'm the strongest male in the area. Whatever, whatever. But you can see there's a spectrum from awareness to self-awareness. And maybe that gorilla, the next lifetime, the next churning of the cycles, you might think I'm crazy for talking about multi-lifetimes, but look inside of ourself, okay? Everything's a fractal of self. Inside of ourself, we have a grand consciousness that is churning and reusing consciousness within ourself the selves are dying the cells are uh, replenishing the cells are eating themselves to replace themselves just like we are on on this plane of existence so it's the multiple lifetime aspect of one individual consciousness using the multiple lifetimes of the cells inside of oneself is happening within our body so it's it's not too far-fetched to feel like there's a ultimate consciousness that is replenishing itself through the selves of this physical plane, the trees, the animals, the humans, and some other things above us, all right? So below the plants and the animals would be the elements, the earth, right? The rocks. And earth, we could say, isn't aware. It just is. And it is the essence of what makes up the awareness. Eventually the minerals, the light, the water, the air, they come together to make up a consciousness that is aware of the mixture of the elements. Now, 
What's above the human being? What is the purpose of life of the human being, right? We, got, we went over the animals and plants. You go from awareness to self-awareness, then you get reborn as a self-aware human being. So a low stage, first stage human being is very, very self-aware. What is, what is the end game here? What is the next step of consciousness? Well, the next step of consciousness is the integration of all of the selves so that there is a sharing of knowledge, a sharing of experience. The internet has already started this, but if you can imagine the internet without the wires, without the technology, and we use ourselves as a technology, what would that take? Well, that would take an understanding through a graduation of many lifetimes, the understanding that we are different instruments using uh, the same consciousness and that understanding would happen when the different instruments all start tuning to the same channel okay when we start tuning to the same channel the same frequency we all start getting on the same page agreeing about things you can see how fighting and distancing and separation and even things like sports causes separation and it solidifies separation it solidifies our place on this spectrum of consciousness so if we can get all on the same page all on the same frequency then we're there right then we are graduated to the next level of the ladder ascension is what it's called but it's going to take everybody on the same frequency once that happens we are communicating we are aware of all selves okay so we went from awareness to self-awareness to awareness of all selves okay again back to the internet this is the beginning stages right a scientist discovers something in london i can be learning about it just as he learns about it so the internet's a story it's going to be replicated naturally because the net the internet is a natural component of our race and so what i'm saying is already existing to a degree social media is going to get really interesting when we can actually see our biorhythms of our counterparts all over the world where we can see if someone's really happy where we can see their sleep quality where we can feel what they feel okay and that that is going to even put us closer and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe this technology never disappears and this technology is the story that we tell ourselves about how this is happening. And we get on the same page through these smart devices, these telecommunication devices. What happens from there? Well, when we feel what everybody feels at the moment that they feel it, then we're able, you know, so you can start seeing the stages were important. The self-aware human is important because they needed self-awareness so that they're a strong part of the whole, the whole collective consciousness. So all of these strong individual parts become functioning like a unit and we can start learning. So we go into a learning stage where we, we learn all there is to learn. We start integrating all of the knowledge there is to integrate and we transcend any level of invention that's possible now we transcend it almost infinitely beyond where we are now and so if you want to talk about extraterrestrial races they're mostly in this stage okay notice i don't want to get into that but uh eventually the need for the body, the need for the individual compartment, the individual body suit, the individual space suit, if you will, starts becoming less necessary and we become light, right? We go back to the ultimate source. We become enlightened. We rejoin jesus or god or what all the religions talk about okay this is this is the stages of evolution and i don't know i just looked at a rock and then decided to talk about this oh now i know actually what i was thinking about 
So within all of these ancient stories, ancient religions, ancient texts, we have the, the theory of the fall and we have the theory, the story of hell, right? The burning eternity. Well, imagine going through these stages and not learning a stage. You know, there's, there's another concept, the, the higher you go, the further the fall, right? And the same thing works with ascension. The same thing works as you graduate through these consciousnesses. If there's a lesson you didn't learn or there's a betrayal that you do, I guess would be the word I want to use. There's a, there's a, there's a uh, incongruency that you present to your reality and you fall. You may fall to this level otherwise known as hell and you will fall down through consciousnesses to maybe the endless state of a rock that just sits there burning and churning in the sun and it's going to be a long time before you start climbing yourself up out of that stage through the ranks up back to the light but it's all happening that way so we are existing in every single one of these stages infinitely now and uh, it's a weird sort of image I have in my brain of like the, the, the light coming down and experiencing every single one of these stages through all these individual selves that think that we're individual but we're not. It's all just uh, different versions of the light uh, and the light changes. <laughs> so this is where it all gets a little bit more dynamic because light isn't light. Light is a light isn't just light light is a uh it is live also it is graduating also and our sun especially it's going through the galaxy all right and the galaxy has seasons it has energetic seasons and shifts and the light as a life source also has other life sources of light within the galaxy and itself is another consciousness Anyways, go outside and look at a rock and uh, think about things for a little bit.